Yes, thank you very much. I mean, you know, we are talking about the appointment. And one of the reasons had to do with the fact that, you know, in Stambik IBTC, we've got a very strong um, succession planning. Um, and what do I mean by that? You know, for every role that is very key and important to us, um, we've got what we call a 2IC, i.e. the person that can step into that role. And um, even beyond that, we've also got those that we call, you know, that they are ready you know, to occupy that role and those who are meant to um, be ready over a period of one to three years. So the first reason had to do with the fact that we were following our, you know, our proper, you know, succession planning because um, Yinka Sonny, you know, the occupant of that role, you know, got, you know, a bigger, you know, more, you know, interesting and more complicated, you know, um, promotion into the group of Standard Bank. You know, wherein, you know, um, about two, three years ago, he was appointed as the chief executive of um, Standard Bank Africa regions, overseeing, you know, 19 African countries. Um, so in line with our succession planning, I stepped, you know, and it was very smooth, it was very seamless, um, you know, um, because, you know, that's the way we've always done it, you know, in Stambik IBTC. And it's also helped in terms of being able um, to just continue to deliver on, you know, the, the, the strategic goals, the strategic trust of the group. Being the CEO of the bank, um, the, the bank, you know, as we speak today, out of 11 subsidiaries, you know, is actually the largest of all our subsidiaries. Um, and I want to believe and I want to say that it's also the most complex and most complicated. Um, so by the time I became the chief executive of that um, subsidiary, um, I'd already spent some years as the deputy chief executive. And I will tell you that that, you know, more or less, you know, prepared me, you know, significantly, you know, for the challenges. Um, we are talking about, you know, trying to lead the bank at that point in time through the beginning phase of a major transformation that, you know, the group went through more or less, you know, trying to focus on the core aspect, you know, trying to reset, you know, some of the things within the bank, you know, cleaning out, you know, some of the things, you know, um, in terms of whether we are talking about, you know, the, the, the different aspects of our balance sheets, you know, and making sure that at the end of the day, we can put the bank, you know, as a major key subsidiary on a very sound foundation for, for proper growth. And as we, as we can see now, we, we are seeing the results. The benefit of all the efforts, all the heavy lifting that we did, uh, we started to see the results. ESG policies, you know, principles, you know, at the end of the day, it has to be well ingrained, you know, into the fabric of any organization. And for us in Stambik IBTC, being a member of the Standard Bank Group, it is it is embedded. We've got what we call six strat strategic you know, value drivers, right? And there is a very simple formula for that. So the first one is what we call the, we call it customer focus. You add that, you know, we put a plus sign to, so, you know, what we call employee engagement. You add that to another strategic value driver, which we call risk and control. You add that to the fourth element, which is called operational excellence. If you add those four together, they are meant to give you, you know, financial outcome. But the financial outcome that we speak about or we talk about in Stambik IBTC is not just financial outcome for the sake of it. It's to deliver three major uh, um, results. And we call those results SEE. They are meant to deliver positive social, economic, and environmental impact. That is what we call SEE. So when you talk about ESG, for us, that is why whatever we do in Stambik IBTC, you know, at my level, at the level of the senior management, at the level of the board, we must create that positive impact you know, when it comes to ESG. And when, when we, how do, you, how do you embed, how do you ingrain it? Number one, you want to set clear ESG goals. 
every year, please take it from us, we set clear ESG goals. It is embedded also in the performance appraisal of everybody. You know, you can deal it at the unit level, you can deal it at the departmental level, and we deal it at the corporate level. So I, as a person, have got ESG goals that are meant to deliver on. So that's number one. Number two aspect is to ensure that for us in Stambic IBTC, you want to make sure that the board, right, and the board committees, right, have bought 100% into, into, into everything pertaining to ESG. And we are very fortunate. The diversity we've got on our board, I'm not talking about diversity within the context of gender alone. I'm talking about diversity in terms of demographics. You know, I'm talking about the diversity in terms of experiential background, right? Um, you know, different sectors, you know, different operators who are, you know, hone their trades, you know, from different backgrounds. You know, I'm talking about also diversity in terms of, in terms of when you talk about, you know, geopolitical, you know, um, regions. So when you have that kind of a diversity, you can see we are going to end up having robust debate on ESG. And it's during those kind of robust debates that you get the buy-in, you get the commitment of the board. So that is talking about the board. You're also talking about making sure that we have designated ESG champions within every unit and every department. Right. You know, those champions, you know, um, they will remind you as to the deadline. They will remind you as to the project that you are meant to execute. They will remind you as to the link between our ESG goals and promises and the financial outcome. Because everything has to result in those positive, you know, uh, um, financial outcome. The other thing is that we also try as much as possible within the organization to appoint ESG management staff. Those who are well versed, you know, well experienced in things that have to do with ESG. You know, they, they have the commitment, they have the experience, they have the understanding. Then one of the things we've tried as much as possible to do is to define ESG metrics for the organization. We define it, right? So it's not, it's not ambiguous. Right. If you want to have X whatever or X amount of you know uh, uh, X tonnage of carbon you know you know uh, um, that you want to sequester in a particular quarter in a particular year, you put it down, and we go towards you know making sure that we are able to do that. Then we have trainings. So you can see why am I going through all this? Is for us is is very extensive. You know we go through training, and please bear with us. The training that we go through that you have external training programs, we have internal training programs, we also have training programs on, on ESG policies, principles and practices. Those training programs, they are online, the pass mark is 80%. If you don't get 80%, you retake the training because you, at the end of the training, you, you take the exam. So for us, you know, um, it's very important. And maybe once in three years, once in whatever, we try to engage consultants. You know, external consultants, I won't like to mention them, but among the big four, to audit, to check, to review whether we're on the right track. I, I, it's not impossible that I've tried to cover it at a point in time. You know, you know, you cannot give what you don't have. The composition of the board itself must reflect diversity across board. If you don't have diversity in terms of the composition, you are not going to have rigorous, robust diversity discussion. I was meeting one of our customers today and I was telling the customer, right, that many years ago, one of our regulators, you know, um, asked us to fill a board role or there was a board vacancy and they were putting so much pressure on us to fill that role. However, we wanted to fill the role with specific features. 
we wanted the, the incoming board member to have specific, when we told them all those specifications, they told us that we won't see the person, we can't get that person. But we got. We said we wanted this person to come from a particular geopolitical zone of the country. We wanted the person to have proper technical background. We wanted the person to be of a particular gender. We wanted the person to be this particular demographic in terms of age. When we told them, they said what you are asking for is not possible. But I was telling the customer today that every region in Nigeria has good people. You only need to search, be focused, and be intentional. Once you've been able to do that in times of making sure you have a, a you know, proper a, you know, diversity in terms of the composition of the board, then it's to follow your principles, your practices, your, your policies, and put everything that has to do with diversity on the table. Right, because the experiential background of your board members will come to play. Right, the, re the demographic, whatever that they represent, will come to play. Right, then is when you've brought all those, if you don't have a diversified, you know, and you don't achieve diversity in terms of the composition itself, you've already shortchanged that body. So every other thing is just theoretical. Right, but we, we have been able to do that and we continue to do that. It may interest you to know that, let's just say for instance, um, when it comes to you know, um, gender diversity, you know, Stambik IBTC as a group, we must be among the top three, or the, I think the top three in terms of when you look at the percentage of our board, you know, you know, when it comes to the percentage of female board members on our board, we must be among the top two. We have one of the highest. You know, the beauty of it is that it also it helps significantly in terms of corporate governance. It helps significantly in terms of even business. I was pitching in the U.S., you know, for a kind of a mandate. And we've been talking and talking very fast for two hours. Then the CEO of that agency, you know, is a development agency, asked me about diversity. When I told the lady the percentage that we've got on our board and the percentage of senior management, right, and that I as a person, my first boss was a female, whatever, she said that we already qualify for a particular facility. We, didn't, we haven't applied, we qualified automatically. So you can see how some of these things are linked to business. You can see what we are talking about in terms of looking at financial outcome and how at times diversity, ESG, can also help to promote the business outcome, the financial outcome we are looking at. So for us, you know, it's a no-brainer. There, there, there is a reason or maybe more than one reason why Stambik IBTC is the only triple A rated financial institution in Nigeria by Fitch Ratings. We are the only triple A rated financial institution by Fitch Ratings. One of the reasons you say our parentage, or oh, we are a member of Standard Bank. Another reason had to do with what you call the enterprise risk management framework that we've put in place. But I can tell you from where I sit, one of the biggest reasons is corporate governance. Is corporate governance. You know, the, the, the internal discipline, you know, where you follow rules, you follow policies, you follow practices, everything is documented. You don't stray away. You understand? You don't, yeah, very, very important. And what, when you're talking about Nexus, because of that AAA rating, do you know that if we are going to outside the country, for instance, Europe, US, Middle East, you know, to get maybe a funding line, a facility, that AAA rating will allow us to procure the facility 
200, 300 basis points lower than the entities we are competing against here. Can you see? So even though we are competing here, I'm being funded at a cheaper level because of my rating. And that rating is linked to my corporate governance practices. It's a no-brainer. So the connection is there. Now, when you are talking about you know, um, sustainability, there is a reason why many years ago, more than 10 years ago, Stambik IBTC decided to become holding company. Because we've got what you can call leading market positions in about six or seven core areas. We have market leadership in pension business, roughly 40%. In asset management, we have almost 36, 38%. In stock broking, market leadership position. Apart from last year, we were number one, or we've been number one for 13 consecutive years. We buy more stocks, trade more stocks than any other house. We have a business that is below the line, right? It is called Investor Services. It's a custody business for foreign portfolio investors, right? That is why it's below the line, you know. Uh, it's only now that they are trying to come above the line to also have customers that are domestic, I mean, that are, you know, you know in the country. We have 65% market share in that space. Then our investment banking, right, is, is top notch. In fact, we started out as an investment bank. It's part and parcel of our DNA. We've not lost the ingredients, right, of investment banking. So we are number one. Then our global market is also number one, right? So because of that, we had no choice, right, than to become a holding company. Instead of just being a pure bank, pay and receive. And we've seen the benefits. Right, the benefit are giving us resilience. That is what is called multidimensional capabilities. We've got it. Right, that builds resilience, it builds sustainability. Because where Nigeria is going, you need multidimensional capabilities. For us to be able to, when we go to customers, we go to customers with multiplicity of solutions. Do you understand? Right. That helps in terms of sustainability. Because sustainability means, and resilience means, you do very well last year, this year's performance will be better, irrespective of anything. And next year's performance will even be better, irrespective of anything. You cannot do that if you don't have diversity in your portfolio. If you don't have, you know, resilience in your business. If you don't, if you are not, you know, keyed into the economy, you know, in a multifaceted, you know, um, way, that is what we've got. And it's helping us. Check our results in the last, you know, three to five years, pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID, we continue to move. Right, that is sustainability in terms of the business itself. And, and for us, you know, when we now look at, you know, also sustainability within the context of what is going on now, you know, globally, you know, whether it's green energy, whether it's, you know, all, all, all these things, are we plugged into that? The answer is yes, because we are a member of, of, of Standard Bank. You know, some of the, some of the, you know, sustainability, you know, equitable principles and all those things at the global level, we subscribe. Right. And um, for us, uh, whatever Nigeria is doing, whatever Africa is doing, whatever Standard Bank is doing, we've incorporated them into what we are doing here. And we hope that, you know, we can bring the benefits, you know, to all the key stakeholders, especially our customers. There are some of those things that we've had to go through, not necessarily through simulation but real life and because of the the way we've documented the way we've you know we can also take the experience to other african countries i've been to other african countries where we've got standard bank you know presence and we are taking them through how to manage a scenario where a, a, a staff has been kidnapped 
how do you engage the spouse? How do you negotiate, you know, with kidnappers? How do you deal ransom payment? How do you deal the pressure of paying, paying ransom? We've gone through. You, you understand? And we've documented. Right, so we could take to others. Right? Then, you know, all the ones that we have also gone through, the real one, new, you know, redesigned or Naira redesigned project, we went through. People are empowered along the line. And to be quite frank, we got a lot of commendations. Right? The targets that we were giving to distribute whether it's the new note, we surpassed. Because we were ready. You have to be ready. You have to be ready for crisis. You know, you know, I think it's Boy Scout something. You know, is it, you know, be prepared. We have to be ready. We always do that. September this year, we are going through another simulation. Right. And it's a whole day. And so somebody is going to simulate another type of crisis. You know, it could be liquidity crisis, it could be cash crunch, the MD could have been kidnapped. They will throw you everything into the simulation. And we will invite regulators to monitor. We will invite some board members to monitor. Yeah. So once you are wired like that, it's the same way you do fire drill. The day there will be a fire, you just go to the muster point. So we've been, we, I don't want to call us you know, crisis managers, but you know, that's all we are. <laughs> <laughs>
in the what you can call the branch network. Two percent. Right. Again, I met a customer today and we are discussing cyber security and we are discussing everything, how to manage that risk. Right. Because we've got our own CISOC where we check, we track, we monitor, we review everything that has to do with cyber risk. So it's very important, but the way we've done technology is to, is to accept, right, that it's come with its own with his own peculiarities. We are not victims of technology. We've embraced technology and we have many ways. Number one is to embrace technology and to make sure that we are, we are in, investing in digital transformation. Have we done that? The answer is yes. Number two is to make sure that when it comes to personalization of service, throughout, through big data and the rest of it, we are top-notch. As we speak now, we have data scientists. We have data science and data analytics as a department. But this is not to advertise them so that people will not come and poach them. One of our data scientists during COVID joined the global community of data scientists to predict the pace of COVID-19 infection in U.S and he was among the top five. Fortunately, unfortunately for us, the guy was single. He got a job during COVID to one European country. And he was telling me apologetically, I said, but how will you get visa? Our office is on Walter Carrington. The embassy opened because of him. So I'm just trying to let you know how we've embraced technology, how we've embraced big data, right? You know, we've moved forward as an organization. So that is data science, data analytics. Now come to what we call BTP. BTP is business. Uh, what is BTP again? It's something like business transformation program, where we've, we've deployed many robots to actually do what our staff will have done faster, better, with more accuracy. It's incredible. If you want to open accounts, you know, after they've collected the account opening forms, a staff reviewing the account document for accuracy. Best case, we do, he or she will do 10 accounts per day. When we subjected it to this robot, you understand? A robot will do about six or seven you understand, in 60 seconds, is when they shut the server that we can use to validate on CRMS or the server with CBN to see where the, yeah. Then when they shut down that server, this robot will shut down. If not, it will continue. So I'm just trying to let you know how we've embraced technology. We've also embraced technology to the point where um, we look at it from you know, collaboration and partnership point of view. There are big techs that we've partnered with, partnered with, and they are doing so many things. You know, take for instance, AWS. Are we partnering with them? As Stambik IBTC as a group, we are partnering with AWS. Everything talking to cloud computing. We are the forefront, partnering with them. Salesforce which is a fantastic global solution for CR, CR, uh, CRM, you know, customer relationship management system. Have we adopted, you know, Salesforce? Those things are very expensive, but it's to get us across the line. We've adopted, we, at a point, Stambik IBTC together with Standard Bank, globally, we've trained more Salesforce champions because you go into the system to also train yourself and to accumulate points. We accumulated so much points that Standard Bank became the first company outside of Salesforce with the highest number of points. Because as you train, you take exam and you get points. Do you know what our board members, you know, you, you become a Salesforce champion, you become a Salesforce guru, 
you become a sales force, something, something, a scout. As you move along, as you accumulate, some of our board members, despite, you know, that they also joined. And some of them became sales force champions. Because once you've accumulated up to about 50,000 points, you become a champion. Yeah. So you can see how we are carrying everybody along. That we are talking about strategic, you know, collaboration and partnership. And for us to have a competitive edge, what have we done? We've also looked at setting up our own fintech. We've got our own fintech now. Uh, you know, you have the, you know, the group, you know, doing the core, core banking, core asset management. Then you can use your fintech to experiment outside of the group, right? To go into areas where rules and regulations, you know, legacy issues, we don't allow you to go to. So we've got a fintech that is post COVID-19 entity. We incorporated it around this time last year. We've got all the required licenses for that fintech to, to, to move, right? Is a is 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 a is 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 cloud native, paperless environment. They are in one of our buildings, you know, VI. You know, the staff members they wear t-shirts, they wear jeans. If you see them outside, they don't look like bankers, but they've gone very very far. Because what are we bringing on board? You know, the kind of you know focus, risk management, corporate governance that most corporate entities who are trying to deal with fintech cannot get from other fintech players they will get from this one apart from service so our fintech is meant to first of all play in the pssp space payment you know uh, um, um, solution services space but it will go into other areas other value added services so before the end of this quarter you know um, they will come above the line with their you know, services and offerings. So you can see, that's why I was trying to tell you that, you know, if not for all these, you know, uh, licensing, you know, licenses that we have to, we are actually becoming a tech company, you know, we are becoming, you know, a, yes, a technology company. We are tech driven now. And uh, our engineering department is very strong. Um, our tech department is very strong. And we are also adding to the society. We've got two or three schemes. You know, when it comes to manpower development. One of them is digital skill empowerment program. And we've run, we've done two or three streams now where, you know, young, you know, university, you know, graduates, you know, they will go through, you know, we open the application. At a point, the first one we did, maybe 20,000, 30,000. You know, the last one, we saw almost 40,000 applicants. We go through, look for those that are eligible and they've got the aptitude and the attitude. Right, we fund everything. We train them, give them tutorials, register them for certification. So then they become data scientists, they become you know programmers, they become developers, they become uh, cyber security experts. They get certification. We pay for everything, but how do we help ourselves? Maybe the top ten of the class, we absorb them as staff. The rest we drop, we, we give back to the society. And some of them, you know, some of them, they are like, you know, alumni. Um, when we did last week, you know, the, the, what you can call the, you know, whether it's the graduation of the, of the, you know, the stream two, and to commence stream, stream three. Some of them came to share their, you know, their kind of experiences. They've got two certification, they've gone ahead to get additional. Some of them are working in three places now, and they are working from home. Those who came through this program. So we are doing that. We've also got graduate training program, right, where, you know, we bring in, you know, top-notch, you know, university grad with very high, you know, cumulative GPA, either first class or second class upper. There is one thing to train them to be very applicable and to be able to you know, apply their skill set within the financial system. Out of maybe three or four sets, we will dedicate one specifically for technology. So you have a class of 30 or 35 you know, graduate trainees, techie guys. And we've ensured that 
we maintain gender parity. Right, you want to start with 60-40, because ladies, when they go, you know, when they get married, at times they drop off. So to achieve 50%, three, four years down the line, you start with 60-40 now. Right, and, and that's what we are doing. So, you know, tech is big for us. We can talk about it a whole day. The important thing is that they should not hesitate. They benefit enormous to the organization. Right, if you have people whose values are properly aligned to the, that of the organization, right, and those values, you know, when it comes to ethics, when it comes to uh, corporate governance, when it comes to sustainability, when it comes to everything that we've discussed, a lot of benefits for the organization, right? And that is one of the ways that that organization, you know, 50, 100 years, 200 years from now, will be in existence. We are talking about the sustainability of an organization. All these things that we've discussed today, you cannot compromise. There are immediate benefits, right? Because we are seeing it. Right, in terms of, you know, whether, you know, there are businesses, there are mandates that we will win as Tambic IBTC because of our corporate governance. You know, during COVID, we brought in, you know, we discussed with one of the futurists based in the Middle East. And he was telling us that the world post-COVID, that companies and conglomerates that will take advantage of unfolding opportunities they will have at least three things among some of the, he said one of them is trust. The second one is collective intelligence. The third one is capabilities for partnership and collaboration. Everything we've discussed now, we in Stambi KBTC, we've got them. If Nigerians don't trust us, they won't commit six trillion naira belonging to them for their future needs. They won't commit into our hands. We cannot compromise on any of this. If we compromise, we lose the trust of the people. Trust is key. Collective intelligence, you know, diversity in your board, making sure that, yeah, it's very important. Right. Do we have collective intelligence? Even the partnership and the collaboration we are talking about, that's why we can collaborate with Microsoft. We can collaborate with Amazon. We can collaborate with Salesforce at the very highest level. So we are, we are good to go and there are benefits. And you know, those who are still struggling, you know, one of the things that just embed all these things as part and parcel of, of the DNA of the organization. 50 years down the line, the organization will still be in existence. And the organization will continue to reap the benefits you know, of that. And that's the only way you can delight all your stakeholders. There are many stakeholders, regulators, customers, staff, the communities where you, the equity in you know, those stakeholders, those who funded the organization. The best way to delight all these stakeholders is to subscribe to all these principles we are talking about. When you are talking about you know, um, 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 fairness, you are talking about ethics, you are talking about accountability, you are talking about you know, integrity, all those things, you have no choice. Corporate, proper corporate governance, you have no choice. Being led by the rule of law, yeah. You know, but you know, I, I encourage everybody you know, to subscribe to it. It's to their own benefit, both for the corporate and for the individuals. Yeah, what we do inside the company is what we do in our, in, you know, in our personal lives. So we don't live two, two, two lives, it's one.